last year, um, I was laid off from work two weeks before the festival. Mm. And um, I remember that that first week, I was just... I'm going to stay in bed and just mope and blah, 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 blah. And that's what I did. And then I like snapped out of it and I was like, holy F, Tracy, you have a festival in a week. Yeah. <laughs> you have people coming in from all over the world that you have to, um, that are relying on you. Right. And so that sort of got me out of the funk. Live from Los Angeles, California, this is the Lisa Murray Show. And with your host, Lisa Murray. The day I felt like I really started living. I don't have enough money to start this business. I'm tired. I hate it. I'm working all the time. I'm not inspired when I'm worried about money. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. I'm so sick of all these positive people talking about dreams, dreams, dreams. What about money? Like, how am I supposed to get the money? What it's really about, it's about you pursuing what makes you come alive. It's about continually connecting with that energy and just keep doing that. Keep going towards that. That's what it's about. Need to give up. There's, just, there's too many obstacles. I can't take this shit ships anymore. Ships are safe in the harbor, but that's not what ships are built for. It feels really good to be my own boss. I have dreams, damn it! I have my voice back! Well, almost. It's like 97.4% back. But you know what? I'll take it. Because I was dying. Without my voice, oh my god. It was awful. I felt like a different person. No, I need to be able to talk. It's like a huge part of who I am. Like, blah, blah, blah. No, I need to talk. It is February 2019. So you're either feeling really good right now because you're like, you know what? My January kicked butt. Or you're feeling like, God, it's Groundhog Day all over again. I'm never going to move forward on my stuff ever. I know. I've been there. I'm there a lot, actually. I'm probably more there than I'm not there. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited about today's show because you may have gotten from the last uh, podcast, last week's episode, that I am starting a film festival. It's the Ag and Art. Ag is Agriculture and Art Film Festival. And Tracy is actually mentoring me, which is like, oh my God, she's just really been a huge help, huge resource for so many questions I have. Like, what's a film festival? <laughs> Tracy is the festival director and she's the founder of the Valley Film Festival in the Valley in Los Angeles, and they are on their 19th year. I mean, they're doing something right, okay? I know Tracy through my filmmaker friend, Esther Brim, who has had now two films in the festival, but she had her first ever feature film, feature documentary, Butterflies, which is a documentary, was the first documentary ever made about the first wave of YouTubers that made a lot of money. And Esther was innovative enough to film them and capture them at different YouTube meetups and at their houses while they were blogging and everything else. So that was her first film, Butterflies. That's when I met Esther. And that is she and then she screened Butterflies at the Valley Film Festival. So I went to that and that was really good. And that was awesome. Then for, fast forward all these years. And now Esther has a film called Not Your Skin, following some transgender families. And um, I am one of the producers, and I did some of the cinematography for that. And I really enjoyed the project. I enjoyed the subjects. And the screening was this past summer at the Valley Film Festival in NoHo at Lemley Theater. And it was so great. It's so supportive. The staff, and just Tracy, you know, it just trickles down. Tracy has such a good attitude. She's so kind and down to earth. You know, I mean, putting on a festival is a big deal and it's stressful and you're dealing with a lot of questions all the time. And I, I would totally understand if she would be, you know, short with me or be irritated or something like that. She never is. She's always like, hi, what can I do for you? And I'm like, oh my God. It's like, she's just like this endless well of niceness. So she's helping me with my Ag and Art Film Festival, which is in September in Vacaville. And uh, she's encouraged me, like, just do it, just do it. And I'm like, ah, and so I took the jump. But uh, she's amazing. I asked her if I could interview her because, you know, if you're a filmmaker and you're trying to go out into the festivals, it's daunting because there's so many big festivals that it's just like, you don't want to get lost in some big festival. 
but then you don't want it to be so small that it's kind of like not really worth your time. So you want to find one that really, you know, is, is a fit for your project, number one, but also a fit for your level. Like, what are you looking for? What are you trying to do? And I just think the Valley Film Festival is such a great place to go and, and watch films and get to know the filmmakers in a very intimate way. I, I just love her and I love what she's done with the festival. It's one of my favorite festivals. Like literally I was like, I'm going to, I I had to bend some stuff in my schedule to make it, but I didn't want to miss it. So I'm like, this is a good one. This is one of those good festivals. I did this interview with Tracy on New Year's Day and I had just spent New Year's Eve with Esther and Tom, her boyfriend, who's also, he's an editor. And uh, we danced to Madonna and I think maybe I did some Czech shots. I'm not even sure. They're both from Czech Republic. And they had been celebrating New Year's Eve since like, I don't know, whenever it became the new year in the Czech Republic. So by the time I got there, it was like, I had to catch up. (laughs) So the next morning, early, it felt very early, I went to Hollywood and uh, I brought my studio with me. I interviewed Tracy. We sat in her dining room. I actually put the microphone in between us on her dining room table. And it was one of my first interviews. Like, I think it was my second interview with this microphone. And I had the headphones on. And I think I was just a little like out of it (laughs) because I could have sworn I heard my voice as well as I heard hers. And then when I listened back, I was like, oh God. And so I think I had the microphone on her because, you know, you can switch whether it's omnidirectional or whatever. And I had it so it was just on her. So I just sound like a crazy person yelling in the room when I'm asking questions. <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad, but yeah, you'll hear it. So you know what? We're learning. We're learning together. And it's it's a fun place to be. It's a supportive environment. If you make mistakes, I'll be supportive of you. And so I know I can feel the support coming from you that, you know, you're like, Lisa, don't worry about it. It's the content that matters. And exactly. That's exactly what I always say. Seriously. No, but anyways, I really hope you enjoy this interview with Tracy. She's just like a wealth of positivity and information. And uh, be sure to check out the Valley Film Festival. And you'll hear in this interview, she also talks about the uh, film market that they're starting. So if you are a filmmaker, you have a film or you're a producer, this is your chance to meet with buyers in Los Angeles. I don't think there's any other film market type thing like this that exists in Los Angeles that's small like this. Um, there's the AFM, the American film market, but that's huge. Like, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's like, oh my God, it's like high roller type stuff. But the, uh, Valley film market will be very, this is going to be their first year. And I know they're going to put everything into it. Cause I mean, they've been around 19 years with the festival. I mean, they're doing something right. All right, you guys hope you enjoy. And, uh, I'll see you at the end. I'm so glad you're meeting with me today because... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and we're in Hollywood. That always feels good. I, I was just telling someone yesterday, I love Hollywood. Like, some people are like, ew, Hollywood. I, I've always loved it. I just feel... I don't know if I've had multiple lifetimes here. I don't know what it is, but I just feel like all the dreams that were here and, like... Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, Yeah. It's weird because... I mean, I grew up two miles from here. Wow. Um, and... Uh, I, when I exit my street, I always just go west towards the valley um, instead of going, I guess, east towards Hollywood. Um, well, I guess it's south, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> but on, it, it does say it east and west and south, and you're like, what? Yeah, it's a little weird. Um, but on my way to work, I have to go south. West. (laughs) And lately I've been taking Hollywood Boulevard, which is just so weird because you, I don't know. I just don't think of taking Hollywood Boulevard. And, um, and then when I'm on it, I'm like, Oh, everyone wants to be on Hollywood Boulevard. And here I am. (laughs) Um, so yeah, it is a little, but I mean, I love my little neighborhood. Yeah. This is great over here. I don't, I don't think I've ever been back here. 
you, yes, you would not know this street existed. Um, you've passed it a million times, mm-hmm. going through yep. the pass, going to the bowl. But unless you have someone that lives up here, you just don't know that this street exists. And it's the only street in the neighborhood that doesn't have permitted parking. Yeah, I know. I, I was like, wow, it's all open. I could just park. Yeah. But I used to drive by here all the time because I lived in Studio City. I lived mm-hmm. in Violent Aventura. Right oh, over right. There, and I worked at Paramount Pictures. Right. So I, this is where I either took this road or the 101. Like, But I always thought, well, who, what's this light for? Who's up there? <laughs> so now I know. Me. You. It's all mine. Tracy. My light. So I want to talk to you a little bit about your film festival. Sure. The Valley Film Festival, the oldest running film festival in Los Angeles now. Woo-hoo. Uh, right. No, not oh. quite. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're getting there. But no, there's... Um, Dances with Films is a few years older. Oh, I didn't know that. And then the Asian American Festival. I think it. What the heck is that? Sorry, there's oh, some okay. there's some noise yeah. coming from over yonder. Oh, it's my cat. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Who is not normally playful in in batting stuff around? So it's weird to hear noise. It is like I'm gonna have fun. It's the first day of the year. <laughs> it's a new me, new kitty. <laughs> um, so we are drinking coffee. Yes. And. Tracy frothed my milk, and I do with um, milk, regular milk and sugar. It's very good. I love this. Thank you. And so what do you have in yours? Uh, just milk and coffee. No nice. sugar. Okay, I will be back to the no sugar train after this, after today. It's done. Like, something happened December 1st, and it went down that way. Okay, so tell me, why did you want to start a film festival? What happened with all that? Because that's just sure. so ambitious. Um, well, I'm from the Valley, I'm from Los Angeles, and I, at the time I started the festival, I was living in New York, and um, I went to um, college in New York, and I was working in film in New York, and I was working on a, I was volunteering with a film festival called Gen Art, and I was planning to move back to L.A., and I really just wanted to find a film festival I could volunteer with in the valley that's it wow (laughs) I was not planning to start a festival uh and so oh and the reason I was I was um I wanted to find something to volunteer with is because I was moving back home my parents are a little older my dad was a little sick so I was coming home and I just wanted to find something where I could just you know stay in the creative community and um and be in the Valley. And when I came back to LA, it was when the Valley was trying to separate from the city of Los Angeles. Mm. So there were all these facts and figures going on about how much the city of LA would lose in tax revenue because of the movie studios. Mm. Um, Because the movie studios are all in the Valley. (laughs) And at the time, the porn community was also... um, in the in the valley too i think it's gone outside the valley now but at the time it was still in the valley and it was like millions maybe even close to billions of tax dollars um that the city would be losing um and i could not find a film festival to save my life in the valley so i was like i'll just start one it's not gonna be hard (laughs) Kind of what I'm thinking right now. Famous but. last words. Yes. Um, and I was sort of going back and forth between New York and L.A. for a year. So when I started it, I, um, in my head, for some reason, thought it had to be a nonprofit. No idea why I thought that. That's just what mm-hmm. I thought. And so I went to uh, California Lawyers for the Arts, which um, they're based in Santa Monica, And, you know, this was almost 20 years ago now, but they were very helpful over email. (laughs) And um, they assigned me a lawyer. So they do pro bono work. Um, You just pay the, like, the actual hard costs for anything, like anything that needs to be Xeroxed or whatever. Um, And... This gentleman told me that it's going to take about a year and a half to two years to get a nonprofit um, paperwork together. So he suggested that I find a fiscal sponsor and just start working under um, their umbrella so that I can focus 
on the artistic and creative aspect of the festival and let someone else worry about the administrative and tax portion of it. And um, he gave me, I think, two or three ideas. Um, and I only went to one. I only applied to one, which was Community Partners. Um, and they're based in Los Angeles. And I have been with them for 19 years now. Wow. So they are, it's, I don't know if you can find a fiscal sponsor for any any nonprofit that is starting up. Um, I would recommend going the fiscal sponsor route because they they take a small portion of the money you bring in, um, of you know the donations that you bring in, but they take care of the taxes. They take care of your administrative paperwork, insurance. Wow. It's just such a relief. You know, it might take a couple extra weeks. Oh, my God, that cat is annoying me. <laughs> She's like, I'm... Bob, come here. Bob Hope wants to be part of this podcast. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait, can I ask you a question? What do community partners, what do they do? So they are strictly... Um, uh, a fiscal sponsor. Oh, so they that's take what they do. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Oh. So they um, take nonprofits under their wings and they have panels and workshops so you can build your advisory board and learn to fundraise. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, they are linked to, I want to say, the California nonprofit or I don't know what the exact term yeah, is, right. but but they're linked to some like official nonprofit agency in California, and so really they're there to just um, you know be your be your back end office. Wow, yeah, that's great. So it takes a lot of pressure off of off of me um, as an executive director. And it's also nice because then they push like every three months or every two months, they will send me the paperwork that I need to fill out for um, federal paperwork and stuff. So oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. that's the part that discourages me that yes. I can't really stress that about, even though they're there, that would be a person that takes care of it. Even finding them, thinking about it, that totally makes me just get glossy. I'd like, you should. Oh. You should look into community partners because I don't think they are limited to LA nonprofits. I was going to ask you that. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I want to start the Ag and Art Film Festival mm -hmm. up north. And um, yeah, well, how did you get to the name? Well, I know it's the Valley Film Festival, but did you have other ideas? Were you like kicking around names? Um, yes. So I wanted to call it the Valleywood Film Festival. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's cute. But Valleywood.com was already uh, owned no. by <laughs> – no, 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 no. It's like some guy in the Tennessee Valley who cuts wood. <laughs> oh. So. Oh, that's – yeah. He's in yeah. the valley and he yep. cuts wood. So yeah. So Valleywood. It's, yeah. So – and he, they're still in business. Every once in a while I yeah. check out that domain. Right, um, right. And then um, – I sort of toyed with the idea of adding North Hollywood or NoHo to it mm. because that's where we were. But I really just wanted to um, – I wanted to encompass the entire valley. I didn't want to be stuck – not stuck, but I didn't want to Limited. limit it yeah. to one neighborhood mm. in the valley because the valley is just so big. Mm -hmm. Um if, if the val so one of the facts that I learned during <laughs> the first year was that if the valley separated from Los Angeles, it would be the sixth largest city in the United States. Oh, wow. um, so it's pretty big, yeah. and um, I yeah, I just didn't want to call it by a neighborhood name. Mm -hmm. So it never separated then. No, it did not. Okay, so I don't yeah. Know about that. No, no, no. It's still part of the city. But what came out of uh, what came out of that, which is pretty cool, are the neighborhood councils. Mm -hmm. So every neighborhood now has a board of maybe eight to ten representatives, oh, cool. and so they represent their neighborhood to city hall, oh. um, so that the valley has some representation. Um, in the city. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so it, it worked out. I mean, come on, the names that they were towing around for the valley, they wanted to call it Camelot if it separated. Oh, God. We're just really bad. No. So, yeah. So, 
So how did you, like, what got you through this? Did you have a vision, like, in the very beginning? I'll take you back to the beginning, which is where, okay. we're, where we're at. How did you get through that? Because I'm sure you were discouraged many times. Or did you just not? You weren't discouraged. You were like a bullet. Wow. Um, I wasn't really discouraged. But, you know, I think when I first started it in my head, I was like, we're going to be as big as Sundance and we're going to do <laughs> and, then, and then. By the way, I'm so glad you're not. It's like my favorite film festival is your film festival. So. <laughs> well, I mean, it becomes pretty evident really early on when you don't have the millions of dollars coming in that um, you are going to be a uh, community festival mm -hmm. and that you are going to have to involve the community, whether it is the local community or the film community. Right. Um, yes. Yeah, so I think my plans of being the Sundance of the San Fernando Valley um, disappeared really quickly. <laughs> Sundance uh, of San Fernando, San Fernando Valley. That's cute. I just, for me, I lose my way a lot. Like, I think when I was like in my 20s, I was very, very like, nothing could stop me. I just moved towards something. Mm -hmm. But something long like this where I have to involve legal stuff and I have to be where it's dragged out over time, yeah. that's where I would lose my vibe with Well, it. I think because I have community partners behind me, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about um, the legal part, right. which, yes, if I had to deal with that on top of everything else. And the day job in life. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, because you have a job. You have a whole other right. life that you have. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, okay, so getting back to why was the night discouraged. I, you know, I think there was a – I got a lot of support the very first year. And, um, yeah, Pacific Theaters came on board oh, really early on. Great. So our first festival was at the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Oh, nice. Um, which was a dream come true for me because that's where I grew up in the 80s wow. was at the Sherman Oaks Gallery. Oh, that's so cool. So that was really fun. But And they were reopening, which is how they could support us. Um, but once they were fully reopened, they were like, see ya. <laughs> uh, and then we moved over to the El Portal Theater in North Hollywood, which was also a theater that um, I grew up attending films at. And um, they were very supportive, too. The NoHo arts community at the time was not supportive. So I had to really rely on my network of um, my NYU film community. Okay. I had to reach out to them for a lot of um, support. And actually, most of my friends that were working with me that very first year are still working on the festival this oh my year, gosh. 19 years wow. later, I know. That's great. It's amazing. So I we survived because we learned to um, produce on a very small budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we um, are nice people. So that is one thing that I try and make sure everyone on the team is, like, not an a-hole. Right. Um, because you don't want to be part of anything where you have D-bags. Yeah. I, just... I love your festival because it feels like what I thought film was going to feel like. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, you know, I worked at Paramount Pictures, and I've been to a lot of premieres, and I've been to Sundance, and now I've been to Napa Valley Film Festival and some other festivals. And it's like, it's cool and it's fun. But as a filmmaker, um, it it feels good to be there. I feel creative. I feel like I'm in oh, a community. Good. Yes. And everybody that works at the festival, all the volunteers, you, are amazing, helpful, nice, down to earth. It's just, that's what I feel like it should be. You know, we're all just creating this art. Right. This medium of, you know, film, like why not join forces or, you know. Right. And that's exactly what we try. We, you know, we try and make it about the experience and the community rather than the fancy add-ons. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, so. I think that that takes away. It's not like even when I was at the Napa Valley Film Festival and I was with people who go to film festivals or, or you know, those kinds of film festivals, mm -hmm. you know what I'm thinking? This is not indie. I mean, there's stars showing up. There's right. this is not. I mean, it's not a stu It's really it's a studio film, but there. This is another way for them to market the smaller films that aren't blockbusters. Right. So, but a lot of people who go, which is fine, because there's a market for everything. And I've seen movies I wouldn't normally see, mm -hmm. but it's not really the independent thing, and that they don't understand that because they don't go to those kinds of festivals. Right. And it's such a different vibe, and you really have to like. I don't know. I just. I would encourage people who love film, 
who go to those bigger festivals to try to support some of the smaller festivals. Mm -hmm. Because if it weren't for the support of the smaller festivals, a lot of voices will never be heard, ever. Absolutely. And some of these films that you see, you're never going to see them elsewhere. Yeah. It's, uh, it truly is. Um, when I see the foreign films that come in, because I, I love foreign movies, mm. when I see the foreign films that come in, I'm like, no one else is going to see these here, uh, which is also kind of exciting, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but then when we don't program them, I'm like, ah, well, at least I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did our so screeners. Is, is that something when you're, when you're, like, in the thick of it, do you, like, really think about, I'm giving someone a platform? I'm yes. like, cause I would imagine that's a very serious responsibility. It is. And actually we've taken it a little more serious, uh, in the last few years because of our political climate. Mm. So I've been, um, last year and the year before, I think we made a really conscious decision to try to not program films, um, where women are beaten up, oh. raped, pushed around. Um, And, you know, unless it's part of a larger story, um, if it's unnecessary. I mean, it's really weird because you see these films and I don't think the filmmakers are even aware or the, the, I I doubt when someone's writing a screenplay that they're adding to every single line. Mm -hmm. And then when the film comes out and the lead character spews that out of their mouth every 10 minutes, but it, it does nothing to further the, um, the story along. It really takes it, takes you out of the story. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah. So we're just, we're trying to be very aware of what we're programming, that we do have a responsibility, um, to showcase responsible media. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's difficult sometimes Um, but I'm glad that we're a little more aware of it. Do you love going to farm stands and buying fresh from the farm produce? Do you have to pull over on road trips to pet a cow? No? Okay, maybe that last part's just me. Regardless, regardless. We can all agree on our love for all things agriculture. And how about art? Don't you love watching films about artists, painters, singers, dancers, musicians? Coming in September is the Ag and Art Film Festival in Vacaville, California. And they are open for entries. So if you have a film, a narrative, a documentary, a short or a feature, if you're a student or if you're a pro, this is your chance to show your film to the world. And by the world, I mean Vacaville, California. But still, it's going to be awesome. Right now, until February 18th, entry fees are only $7.07. That's right. You heard me. $7.07 in honor of the 707 area code of Vacaville. Visit agandartfilmfestival.com for more information. And you can submit your film exclusively on filmfreeway.com. When people think of the Valley Film Festival, what do you want them to think? Like three words or a log line. Like what do you want them to have in their mind? Valley Film Festival is? Great independent film. Oh, that's great. Awesome. That's it. And it is true independent film. Yes. 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 Okay, Mm -hmm. good. Very good. Is there anything about the film festival that scares you? That you wake up in the middle of the night just like, oh my God. Ever? Have you ever been? Yes. Okay. Well, (laughs) So the first five years, I really worried a lot about tiny things, like typos and programs and (laughs) that sort of thing. And then um, a filmmaker, John Putch, a filmmaker that's been in our festival multiple times, I think, called me uh, the day before the festival opened to wish me good luck. And I probably was like, (laughs) and he's like, just relax. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it is not brain surgery. Mm-hmm. It is a film festival. And um, I was like, yep, you're right. So I once, you know, I, I'm probably the two weeks leading up to the festival are when I am the most stressed. Um, but once that opening day happens, mm-hmm. there's nothing else I can do. Right. And so I try and let it go as 
much as possible. And I think I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You seem totally um, cool and collected when I see you. Because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be the stressed out person that filmmakers come to and are like, what's wrong with her? Right. Um, and I want to be present and there for them as well and helping them. So, um, yeah. So, but What's keeping me up at night now in terms of the festival is that we keep trying to expand it, or we are expanding so much. Um, we're, we are starting a film market in March. Oh, and so it is going to be our first film market. And now I'm really nervous about it. <laughs> so can you oh, we've never done a film market. <laughs> can you describe what a film market is and how that's different from sure. a Sure. So, I mean, in an ideal world, I think we would merge the two. Um, but I wanted to try it out on its own first just to get the logistics down and see if we were successful at it. But basically what a film market is, is um, a marketplace to sell films. Mm. And we have really good relationships with um, distribution companies. And because we are in LA, um, we just figured outside of AFM, which is a gigantic event that we are not trying to compete with in any way, shape, or form. Right, right. That's the American <laughs> uh, film market, right? That's the American film market. It attracts distributors from across the world and it is, you know, 10 days. They take over a hotel. It is um, where deals are made. And people um, like rent a suite, mm -hmm. a hotel suite, and that whole suite is for their film. Right. right. So our idea right now, it's just a one day film market. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, and we are just reaching out to the local LA based distribution companies. Um, and um, we plan to have booths for films. Um, we're going to keep it really, really small. Good. I think 25 to 30 films or mm -hmm. filmmakers representing their films or producers um, is basically, in my world, that would be successful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then we also want to... Um, add some panels to that day and just some fun, you know, yeah. networking mixers too. Yeah. It's a little bit of a different focus because it's more on where do I see this fitting into the world somewhere? Whereas like a film festival is more like enjoy these stories or get to know this new voice. Or well, yes. So a film festival is exactly what you said. It is a discovery platform for uh, film lovers and filmmakers. And whereas a film market is just, this is strictly business and we are here to mm -hmm. sell our film, make some money, yeah. make another film. Yeah. Great. So they're two totally different. Um, and we've been trying to put this together for a number of years. So we've been working on this for maybe three or four years. Oh, wow. And last year we had a, um, on 818 day, so August 18th, <laughs> we invited uh, a bunch of distributors out for drinks and just talked to them. Just wanted to, we introduced ourselves to them if we didn't know them already um, and just asked them what they were looking for in a film festival and as a partner. Right. Um, and we told them that we were toying with the idea of a film market and everyone was like, March. That's when you want to do it. Oh, okay. So yes, because it'll be after Berlin. It'll be before South by Southwest. So they really were very specific about the time of year because uh, we had been trying to attach it to the festival the last three years, but we just could not find a space mm -hmm. um, near the festival to do that in, mm -hmm. which is why we didn't. Right. And um, I think it's smart to yeah. separate them and kind of test this and see what is this like because it is a whole different sounds like completely different it's yeah thing. it's totally different and I don't know how to measure the success of it yet right so it could be it like in my world it'll be successful if we have um 25 vendors aka film producers with their market of films oh, nice. um and if we have uh as many, if not more, distributors coming through. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, still toying with with everything. 
It's, and, not, it's exciting, though, and I'm glad that there's a different level other than AFM. I went to AFM one year, and I was totally like, what? Because mm-hmm. I, I just didn't, I don't, that's not where, that's like the Sundance of film festivals. Right. It was just so, everyone had so much money just to market it for the sellers. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so yeah. that's great that you're offering a whole nother, is there any other film market that's in L.A.? Other than AFM? I don't think so. Well, God, look at you guys. You're, like, breaking ground everywhere. I mean, there very well could be, and we just don't know about it, but uh, the, I haven't the heard of any. distributors didn't seem to know of one either. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we'll see if someone listens to this and goes, ah, excuse me, I have one. Well, then just send me an email. But I don't think so. because <laughs> we'll, we'll include you. Don't yeah, worry. you'll be involved. <laughs> so if people want to know more about the um, this film market, what's mm-hmm. it called? Right now, we are calling it the Valley Film Market. Yay! <laughs> um, and then there's a guy chopping wood with the Valley. <laughs> no, I'm um, so, do you have a website, or how would they be able to contact it, you if they're interested? It would be on uh, the fest through the festival's website, which oh, okay. is valleyfilmfest.com. Valleyfilmfest.com. Okay, mm-hmm. and I'll have the links and all that stuff in the description and. You know, where it all goes. Yeah, I don't think we are going to create a second website for it just yet. I think it's just going to be enveloped into. And now this is also another one where I'm thinking, oh, maybe we call the Market Valleywood. So- <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you ever wanted to make a film? I have, um, and I have, and I'm just, you know, I'm not that good at actual production work. Oh. Um, I am good behind the scenes. I am good connecting people to each other. I'm a better sure. producer, oh, okay. um, but not an on-set producer. <laughs> <laughs> I like to sleep. I like to uh, be warm. Yeah. I like <laughs> all the things that set life does not offer somebody. I think that part, what you're saying right there is so important to people who like just are drawn to film. They love film. And I think it's so important to realize that there's so many places you mm-hmm. can live in that. But just keep going. Maybe, okay, maybe you did this one part of it for a while and you didn't like it, but there's other parts. Find your right. part, mm-hmm. you know? Like, for me, I really like, I like the writing, well, writing and shooting. I, I mm-hmm. guess I like to be part of the whole creative part, but li- literally the business part of it, I just can't. I just, I don't know, I'm really proud right. about that. But, and I like to do that more. Yeah. Well, that's great. So. So I have this film. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good partnership. I know. Right here. Hello. So, um, let's see. What are you most proud of? Um, I'm proud that I built this festival from the ground up and that it is no longer um, me (laughs) alone um, or with a handful of my best friends running it and that we have a network of people who not only um, volunteer, but are eager and really want to be part of it. So that that is, I have to, you know, every once in a while I have to step back and mm-hmm. say, okay, you did good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, do you ever go through like a dark period where you doubt everything and you just kind of... Of course, who doesn't? <laughs> so who what gets you through doesn't? that? Do you allow yourself? Because like for me, I allow myself to go through it. I don't judge it and go, oh, my God, I'm in bed for a day. You know, I just go, yeah, right. I need to be down right now. I need it. And then I get up. It's like a yeah. pig in slop. And then I take a shower and I'm fine, you know. So last year um, I was laid off from work oh. two weeks before the festival. Mm. And um, oh I remember that that first week I was just. I'm going to stay in bed and just mope and blah, 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 blah. And that's what I did. And then I, like, snapped out of it. And I was like, holy F, Tracy, you have a festival in a week. Yeah. <laughs> you have people coming in from all over the world that you have to um, – that are relying on you. Right. And so that sort of got me out of the funk because when you – it's easy to just think you are this – you are isolated – but when you stop and think about all the people that rely on you day to day, whether it is someone at the office or a family member or, you know, the guy who makes your coffee every day, um, there's a whole, like, you know, we're all connected. And um, 
so you're not alone. Yeah, <laughs> and, you're not and, alone. <laughs> and so I just remember being in a real dark space last year and then going, oh, my God, you have people coming in from Dubai. You oh have to get God. yourself up and ready yeah. and, like, put on a good show for them. Exactly. So, yes, the show must go on under any circumstances. Yeah, there have been some – there have been also some um, – years. So there have been years where I was just like, I don't know if we're going to make it because funding was like, you know, the cost of the um, the venues keep going up every year. Mm -hmm. And we don't, uh, last year was the first year we had raised our submission fees in I think 10, 12 years. Um, And it wasn't even by a lot. It was like by $5. (laughs) (laughs) And that was just because we really needed to because our, um, our venue rent was increased by 40%. And so I was like, we need to do this. Um, And I think we raised our ticket price by $2 this year. So they, you know, we, this was like the first year we really made a a big change like that. But for a long time, everything was, you know, really, I think our ticket price was $10 for the last 18 years uh, or 17 years. And then uh, we raised it to 12 this year, 13 this year. Um, So that was, that was a big change, but um, we've survived because we, um, have learned to produce on a low budget, Mm -hmm. um, and rely on our community. And then I was giving the examples of our (laughs) venues. My cat has decided to be extremely playful today and he (laughs) is not normally. So that is why we are laughing. That is so cute. Um, yes. And so there was, there was a time, cause we were at the El Portal theater for the longest time. We were there from our second year to our 10th year. Hey, no, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bob. Bob Hope. No. <laughs> um, and the last few years, uh, that we were using the El Portal, uh, Debbie Reynolds was still alive and she, always had a fall spectacular show. Oh. Um, and she would always come in and like bump our dates. So we would have dates reserved. Oh. And of course, you know, we're a five day festival. We're not a two week run. Right. So the theater would um, bump us for Debbie Reynolds. Oh. And it got to the point where, where I even had it in the contract and they still did it. Oh so I was just like... <laughs> And, you know, and I was just like, I can't compete with Debbie Reynolds anymore. I know, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't and I can't it. move the festival from the fall to the winter, which is, I think they moved us to December once. And I was like, eh, no, no one's in town. And yeah. it's so hard to do. Um, so that's when we used the El Portal for just our opening. Oh. And then we used the uh, White Fire Theater. In Sherman Oaks for the run of the festival. It was also during the time where Lemley was – Lemley is located across the street from the El Portal. And they were just finishing the building of the building. Um, And so after – after just, you know, I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is just be flexible. Um, and if you have to move things around, move things around just mm-hmm. to get it done. Because I think at that, I think that was the year where I was just like, eh, maybe we won't, maybe we won't do it this year. Maybe oh. we'll just wait until Lemley opens up. Oh, wow. And then I was like, no, we'll just get through it. Yeah. It'll be smaller, but that's fine. Yeah. No one says it has to be you know, big every year. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so our, so that year was a little, it was on the small side because the white fire is only a 99 seat theater. Um, but it got us through so we could push on and, um, get to the Lemley, which is a beautiful theater. And I love it. It's perfect. It's the, it's the best theater. (laughs) Um, so what, what advice, what general advice would you give someone who's trying to start a film festival? Like maybe me, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay. Um, there are a lot of Facebook forums that I just discovered. Oh, that's on, a good idea. Yeah, there are lots of them, and I just discovered them in the last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
I don't know if they offer the best advice, um, but I would reach out to people that you know that work on film festivals. So I have a really close network of um, Answers with Films, Hollywood Shorts, um, and C Film Festival. So those are the ladies that I go to if I have a question or need help with volunteers or like, hey, I need some sponsor, I need some wine. <laughs> like, who should I contact? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they are very, just find a network and be tight with them and um, just help each other out as much as possible. Got it. Yeah, yeah that's true. Hey guys, just a quick note to let you know that anything that we discuss in a particular show, any links or any books or anything that we mention will be linkable, relatable, findable, whatever, blah, 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 on IHaveDreamsDammit.com. Make sure you go visit that. And also you can sign up for our email list. You can contact us if you have any show ideas or if you would just like to hear my voice in written form. I'm trying to do a little blog over there, so, you know. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about when you were a kid and when you were going to school, like, what was your vision for your future? Did you know you wanted to be in film somehow, or is film, did it grow out of something else? Well, I grew up in L.A., so film was just a given, uh, everyone's parents worked in it oh, cool. in some capacity, um, cameramen or, you know, grips, or they owned the lighting house or mm. something like that, or they were animators. Um, That's cool. so everyone was sort of involved in it and it was just, um, it wasn't, wasn't glamorous. It was just another, it was just work. Right, right. <laughs> and, um... So I think that's just how I looked at it. It was just another industry to get involved in, um, but it wasn't what I wanted to do first. I think what I – I had two two lines of my, – my brother was supposed to be the filmmaker in the family, oh. and he is a graphic artist now. Oh, but cool. um, I wanted to be a journalist slash politician – Oh my gosh! And then I went to journalism school, took you know went to college, took a few journalism classes, and they were just way too political, like way too political for me. Oh. And I was just like, no, this isn't kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and then politics just got dirtier and dirtier <laughs> as I was getting older, yeah, and I was God. like, no, that's also not what I want to do. I I don't. I don't want my family and my friends and every, you know, drunken night I had in college <laughs> out for the world to oh, yeah right to pick apart. Um, and then I switched gears and um, went to well, I was I was taking journalism classes out here in LA, and then I went to New York for a summer. And fell in love with the NYU community mm. and um, just applied to film school and then got in. Oh, and cool. um, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. So did you make – you made films, obviously, then in film yes. school. Yes, what I did. What were some of your films? <laughs> they were not <laughs> memorable. <laughs> uh, let's just put it that way. I don't even know what the titles are. Um, one was called Don't Tell Godar, and it was a spoof on a few of his – it was like all of his films sort of mixed together. Um, and that one was pretty funny I, in my head, I'm sure. Um, so at NYU at the time, you enter and then you take this one class called Sight and Sound. It's Sight and Sound Film, Sight and Sound Video, and then a sound class. And you had to take two of those three. And I started off with the film class um, where you make five short films mm -hmm. that semester. And they are all – with um, you have to follow the lesson plan, so it's like an emphasis on the lighting or an emphasis on this or whatever. And that is when I learned that I just I'm not a production person. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was really, and I guess it also was because I don't think I had the best crew. Like you crew up with um, four people for the whole semester. Oh, I would and not like that. Yeah, it was it was difficult, and like the first week, one of our guys was 
sadly hit by a car and he broke oh. his leg. So oh he was God. out for the entire semester. So oh. it was like down to me, this woman and this man, and they did not get along at all. So um, <laughs> like they, I, like it was me with one of them, basically. It wasn't three people. It right. was me with one of them. So I didn't really have a great crew experience. That can ruin everything. <laughs> Any group project in college, yes. that's the whole thing. And, oh um, and so then that's what I was just like, I don't want to rely on other people to yes. have to create something. So as soon as I finished um, that requirement, um, I did not take the video class. I took the sound class instead. And I actually like enjoy the sound design and sound editing process um, a lot in sound recording. I did a lot of that. And I don't know why I didn't stick with that because mm. I had a lot of fun. Uh, and then that's when I switched gears to producing because I still wanted to be part of a crew. I still wanted to... Um, expand my network. And right. I think that was, I think that was just, um, I think that's a good lesson just in general. It's just make sure you are working with as many people as possible, even if it's not your project, just like mm -hmm. volunteer, yeah. work with other people because that's how you, um, that's how you expand your network and meet people. Yeah. And so I worked with a lot of, um, Famous people now. <laughs> name drop, name drop. Yeah. Not name dropping anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I took um, film classes and then I went to Paris for a month for the New York Film Academy. Just oh, to, and we nice. only had one day off. Yeah. So you made films all month, you know, just tiny. Mm -hmm. you know. It was really a good experience. Uh, it was a long time ago, but it was a good experience for me because I also hated my crew. If you're listening, no. Um, no, I mean, there were a couple people that were cool, but you could tell they could, they didn't like me. They didn't right. like my vision of things. I was still trying to figure out what my vision for things right. were. Right. So I was kind of a typical female too, where I wasn't as strong in my voice, especially up against a strong male. This guy was like, I did you cinematography. You just hadn't or, found your voice. That's right. You weren't, you were just as strong. You just didn't know yes, that. I know. That's right. So, but I learned what I like about being in groups that you don't like, because it also happened in like classes, mm -hmm. um, is what it feels like to work with people who don't like you or respect you or get you or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's awful. And I, I remember even telling the instructors, I'm like, this isn't at some point, if this were professional, I would have fired them and gotten somebody else. Like I wouldn't work with people like this, but that was a valuable lesson to learn because it really colored the entire, mm -hmm. but I pushed through it anyways. And I found a way to make it happen. I was very resourceful. I mean, yes. High five. <laughs> and, you know, it was, I don't know, like the day, the day I was supposed to shoot my thing, because we switch off, you know, you need to be the camera person or the right. person. Okay. So on the day my project was supposed to be shot, the actors did not show up. So we had to start all over. We're in Paris. We have no, we're doing guerrilla style, no permits, nothing. Right. So also we're trying to hide the camera from cops. And they didn't show up. So I had to rewrite an entire thing on the spot. There was a guy jogging. He heard someone talk, speaking English. He goes, are you guys American? And the guy's like, oh, my God, are you American? We're making this film. And he goes, oh, I'm an actor, for, and I live in L.A. And I'm like, please come over here and be in my film. So I just created a whole film. And it worked out because then my instructor was this big, I don't even remember his name. He's probably some huge filmmaker now. But I just remember he used my film as an example of blocking and, like, how to use the space. And How oh, great. And I was just trying to make it interesting visually because it was so on the fly. But uh -huh. But the people in my group were not, I mean, there was one guy that was really helpful, but the rest were just like annoyed with me and bored. And I wasn't, I wasn't that wild about their projects, but I was professional and I showed up and I did their, so it was, it was frustrating. And I realized some people are cool and some people aren't cool. And that is really life. That's not just mm -hmm. the class. So I was happy about that, but yeah, it was a very difficult lesson to learn. <laughs> it's hard when you don't have the support of people, um, so I feel your pain since yes. we went through the exact same uh, uh, process, yeah. same issues. It almost completely discouraged me and made me not want to do film anymore. Like I thought, this isn't for me then. I hate this feeling. I even wanted to leave Paris. So I was like, I hate, I hate this feeling. I've never been one of the cool people. I don't want to be a cool person. The guy that was in my group was like all cool. Everybody loved him. And I was just like, I'm not one of those people. I literally just want to tell my weird, quirky stories. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all I want to do. So... But I met this guy from Morocco, Faoud, Faoud, wait, Faoud Mikrat, and he made me laugh so hard. He goes, let's go out to dinner. So we went to dinner. He was in my group, in my not in my film group, but in right. the class. 
And he was like, how would you let these, why would you let these people, you came all the way to Paris. And he was just like that one of those people that was on the path that just got me right back into it. And I was like, oh Aww. my God, you're totally right. And I love that guy. Like, Do you still him. talk to him? I don't talk to him. But I think I found him a couple of years ago. And we're both like, hi, hi. And then that's it. And so it was just like on the Aww. internet. So I'll have to find him again after this conversation. Cause... Everyone needs a Faoud Mikrat in yeah, their life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was amazing. I'm like, this Moroccan guy speaks all these languages. He was amazing. And he, he just threw me back into like, why would you even let, you know? Mm-hmm. But we all need that. You know, you need that encouragement from outside of you. But Absolutely. So then you found your way to the film festival so you could still stay involved in film. <laughs> right, yes. So how do you balance paying, like paying your bills and living your life with this huge responsibility of a film festival with all these like filmmakers? and? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, the first five years of the festival, I just did temp work because um, I couldn't find something that I enjoyed doing um, full time that I felt I could work into my secret life. Right. Uh, <laughs> Does your job know that you do the festival? Yes. And actually, the, the job that I had for 12 years um, was a company I used to market the film festival. And they were just they were just starting out and um, asked if I was looking for a job because they were hiring and trying to expand oh. their company. Um, so I ended up working for them for – for a very long time, and actually, everyone that worked at that company um, worked had you know had a had a side life as an artist. So they were either a performer or a writer or oh, that's cool. You know, um, singer or whatever. Um, so they were very they encouraged that because that was their that was their bread and butter was yeah. um, was art. And um, now I am over at the Recording Academy, which is also pretty cool. Very cool. Um, And everyone there, too, seems to have a side hustle. It's mostly (laughs) music-related. Right. Um, But, yeah, so everyone – and it's just, you know, once you get into a pattern, then you can – you know how to compartmentalize your life so that you can work on – everything else Mm -hmm. so I know like what has to happen between January and March to get the festival to where it needs to be in the fall and um and yes I could I should spend more time in January February and March (laughs) because that would probably relieve a lot of the pressure from like August and September (laughs) but I'm just like nah yeah right (laughs) so yeah there's there's certain things and I should probably write it down because um you you can totally write a book about film festivals I don't know why I don't know if people would read it but well no because even in my research like a lot of the people that write the books are the ones first of all the books were written a long time ago there's not I don't think there's new ones out I haven't really actively looked at well I did actually I was googling it and I couldn't find anything current and indie Right. Because the girl that wrote the other one, what's that big one? And then it's like, she's some, she does all this stuff with Sundance. And it's like, how oh, could how, that be? Right. How Not to Make a Short Film, yeah, that one. Roberta right. Monroe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's old. Yes. It's very old. So I don't know. I would like something new that's now that I bet you would. Awesome. You know, well, I will, um, I'll get on that. <laughs> yes. Please start writing that book in between everything else you have to do. But one of the things people always ask me, do you really like living in LA? What is it about LA? And don't you just get sick and what I love about L.A. is that people are creative and usually they have more than one thing going on. Mm-hmm. And I just relate to that. I, right. Even if I lived in Nebraska somewhere, I would have, I know me, I would have something else going on that's right. creative. So I'm paying my bills, but I'm doing something else. Mm-hmm. And to be in an environment where that's the norm and no one thinks it's interesting or weird, they're just like, oh, yeah, okay, so you're doing that. That's cool. You know, I love that. So even jobs, they kind of understand that you're like, right. I know this isn't your life. Whereas, like, some of the jobs I've had, like, in Scottsdale, they really think, like, this is my life. And I'm like, I'm actually a temp. <laughs> but okay, you know, whatever you want to think. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm going to live here forever. I know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and I start to feel like I'm dying. If I'm not doing something creative for me, I feel like my head's being held underwater. Mm-hmm. It just, I I can't do it. And I don't know how people do it. Right. I don't, I don't know either. Like, I have some friends who, um, who... Like when I have what I have, a, sadly, I have a lot of friends who are unemployed. Um, That's the other side of it. Right. But they don't like my thing is, OK, so you're unemployed. Just 
volunteer somewhere, do something, keep just it keep it moving. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because you don't want, it's so easy to, uh, get stuck in that like downward spiral yep. of like, poor me and da, 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 da. And, mm -hmm. The world hates me and I'm never going to be able to do this again. It's so, I mean, I, I go to it sometimes and I'm like, no, come on out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so I think when you're, when, when you are just doing something, anything, um, and people are relying on you, then you have a sense of responsibility mm -hmm. and like a sense of purpose too. Mm -hmm. Like I have to do this. And even if it's, even if I'm not getting paid for it, it's, yeah. um, Someone well, else is relying on me. Right. And also I feel like, like Dapo will do like a, he'll be in a studio for something and then somebody will see him there and be like, oh, I have this other project, you know, mm -hmm. you should do. You And people say, well, it's all about who you know. It is kind of, but it's also about being out there and being available and your face because it doesn't matter. You can be on social media, you can be doing all these things, but if you're standing right in front of the person that needs something and they there's a vibe thing and there's like, I like you, you're doing a mm -hmm. good job. I have this project. You want to work with me? I mean, that's how it really happens here. I think it's, it's so much in-person stuff mm -hmm. or they're saying, Oh yeah, I was just talking to Tracy cause she, we're going to maybe sponsor for the festival. And they're like, wait, is that the Valley film festival? Oh yeah. I wanted to meet someone over there. So, you know, and it's just, right. that's what I love. So if you're not still going out in those downtimes, you miss out on just weird serendipity things that happen. And, yeah. You have to show your face sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know that's the downside. You're like, I just want to be on Facebook. You're like, no, you got to get out there. Got to get that out there. I know. <laughs> I am the queen of uh, wanting. It, now that I am older, <laughs> like, just want to come home, go to bed, mm -hmm. relax, watch a movie, um, and then I can't. But see, that's all part of the balance, though, too, because yes. it can't possibly yeah. be where you know. That was the other thing I did. I was always out, and then you're not like a person anymore. You're right. not yourself, and you, I don't know, you you're not present even when you do meet someone sure. because you're already thinking about the next thing or you're tired or you're mad that you're there or yep. whatever so it really is uh so important if you're in LA or New York or whatever and you're in the industry to make sure you pull back and keep that balance mm -hmm. there and also for 2018 my motto has been and I'm bringing it into 2019 is just keep going because when things go well, I have a tendency to kind of go, oh, my God, that's awesome, and stop a little bit. Yes, I do that, too. Right? <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? Because I know that I shouldn't do that when I, when I'm, things are bad. I should keep it going, keep moving, keep swimming, uh -huh. keep whatever. But I, my new thing is even when it's going well, keep going, keep yes. going, keep going. Like, take breaks, but keep get up and keep going because – I don't know. I, I find I keep stopping like, okay, cool. I can just coast. Mm -hmm. No, that's so bad. <laughs> I did the same thing. And I realized it a lot this year because I had like so much momentum. Mm -hmm. And um, and I don't know. I don't – like I was trying to figure it out in my head if like I'm afraid of real success. Right. And yes. if that's it because I was like, why would I stop – why would I stop now? I'm almost there. Yeah. Come on, Tracy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or it's like, do I have such a limited view of what success uh -huh. is for me? Like why, you know, is it like I can only get so successful and then I'm like, okay, that's it. It's like, why can't I just keep it open? Like who knows where it'll go? Maybe it'll go somewhere completely else. You uh -huh. know? It'll be amazing. Okay. Oh. So I just have a few more questions. And how do you, like when you're look, looking at a film how do you know this is a film that needs to be in the festival? What does it feel like in your body or what do you measure it by? So usually when I'm watching films that come in, um, they, you know, most stories are exactly the same. They're just told differently. And um, so when you find a story that's been told radically different, um, it, you just, you just, you, you can tell. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just something special. You're watching it and um, you can just tell. Like, I, I can't find the exact adjective or words to describe what the feeling is. It's just when you're watching something, you know, you're looking at something different and special. Okay. Yeah. So you want something just that hits you like that. It feels different, special, even though it's the same. Pretty much. I mean, you know, a lot of stories, um, I mean, those are those are rare. It's really rare to find something that is truly, um, truly, 
like remarkable. Um, not that it doesn't, not that other films aren't good. They are good. Right. So it's just, it's a different, when you find that rare gem, that makes it really exciting. Um, but most films, I mean, I have to say because of, of the way filmmaking has changed, um, films are really well made these days. So, so like with digital cameras yes, and editing yeah. on a computer. And- yeah, so pretty much technically films are really well made. Um, and if you find a film that has a lot of technical flaws in it, you're like, there's no reason for it. Right. Like every once in a while we'll get a film that has really awful sound. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, there's no reason for this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can rent a mic for $10 a week. <laughs> 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 There's no reason one person is mic'd and the other person isn't, oh, and you shit. can't hear the conversation. Oh, no. That happens more often than you think. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, so, and, you know, most of the stories that I personally get really excited about, especially in the last year few years are the stories coming out of the Middle East because um, they have not they've not been allowed to have voices for so long um, and now that they are allowed to share their stories uh, they're just so beautiful and, mm. and it and it totally um, y- you think that they that people in other parts of the world are so different from anyone else in other parts of the world. Right. But we are all the same. That's um, yeah, I, I think not this year, but the year before, we got um, more submissions from Iran than normal. We always get a lot. Um, but they were all so beautiful that we did a special showcase of oh, just cool. films from Iran, uh, new films from Iran, which was in March, so part of their new year. And they were all made by women. Oh, wow. And they were all stories that you would not expect to be told by female filmmakers coming from Iran. So there was a story about abortion. There Ooh. was a story about um, transgen- transgender issues. There wow. was, you know, just all these different stories that um, were really powerful. Wow. And so it was nice to be able to showcase showcase that yeah yeah I bet so then that's you that's sort of what would measure a successful film in your book for the festival how do you measure the success of the festival every year what at the end what do you say this was great uh (laughs) if we didn't fuck anything up (laughs) uh if no one fought (laughs) small 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 things um no, if we um, – obviously, if we can um, break even um, – so since 2008, so since our eighth year, we've been breaking even. Oh, great. And obviously, it would be great to have a surplus. This year, we do have a surplus, which is why we're, we're able to um, do the market. Oh, okay. Um, and this is all – you know, we are pretty much – 2018 was the first year we had um, – cash sponsors again since 2008. So 2008 was the last, you know, once that market crashed, it was so hard to bring in large corporate sponsors Mm. or corporate sponsors in general. (laughs) And so we relied on the donations and um, individuals, which is great. That's what got us through. And, you know, we were, we were already very, um, responsible with um with our funding anyway because everyone's a volunteer mm-hmm. on the festival including me <laughs> and wow, so, that's so um so we everyone was really responsible and they just they know that our kitty goes to goes right back into the content and producing immense and so obviously my long-term goal is to make sure that kitty grows <laughs> <laughs> so that um, the people who have been volunteering for 19 20 years um, can get paid for doing something that they really enjoy doing that's cool. so that that's my goal for after year 20 what happens if you don't break even where does that money come from uh, well, fortunately, we have not had to deal with that, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I'm guessing it would come out of my pocket or, oh my God. or we would just rally and find a sponsor. Okay. 
So, I mean, that's one of the things is that um, sponsorship in the community is really important. And when I, I go through the same thing. So when you're told no a million times, you're just like, ah, oh, forget it. I'll just produce it with what I have. Um, and one of the things that I have to keep reminding myself is that even if 500 people say no, try that 501st person because right. they might say yes. Yeah. And that's what happened this year. Like, I think we spent three months talking to, I, we spent three months talking to a major airline and uh, it was probably <laughs> first three months of my life because they just kept requesting so much from us. And then, and then we'd be on these two hour long phone oh, calls. I can't stand and that. I, you know, and it was just, it finally, after three months, they passed. Oh, and, my God. and, 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 uh, you know, at first I was kind of really pissed off. I was like, you guys just wasted three months of my time and right. da, 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 da. And then I, I looked back and I was like, well, no, now I know what a major airline expects. And now I know how to repackage uh, what we're offering to fit what they want. Right. Um, so you just have to look at every no as not another opportunity. Mm -hmm. And because of the experience with the airline, when we were approached by a bank, <laughs> okay. I was able to um, – kind of figure, you know, tailor what I thought they were looking for mm -hmm. based on our conversations with the airline. So oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So for me, I'm just going to shift gears a little bit. Yeah. Um, for me, storytelling is just really important in my life. Mm -hmm. The mythic journey, the hero journey. Yeah. That is what I use as a measuring thing for like, where am I at right now? <laughs> Am I returning with the elixir or, you know, and then I think there's microcosms and macrocosms where part of me is returning with the elixir to do the podcast. And then there's still part of me that's, uh, you know, in the middle of a battle of something else, which I think we all are going mm -hmm. through. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of story as, you know, seeing all these films, the ones that touch us the most are the ones that have that story that then unifies us all. It makes us Absolutely, realize yes. we're not so unique. Right. I mean, we are unique, but, you know, we have yeah. this unifying mm -hmm. story. So can you talk a little bit about how storytelling, what it means to you? Absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that is, um, for the last few years, we have, our tagline has been united by film. Oh, nice. And um, it's because... Like, there are dysfunctional families <laughs> everywhere in the world. <laughs> it's not just the United States. And there are women dealing with bad marriages or heartbreak or success all over the world. And um, so, yes, the so storytelling is definitely um, – it's really important to any any film that it's told – like, it should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be left with questions. Right. And um, – or if you're left with questions, it's um, it's intentional and uh, fodder for conversation afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but, yes. So I look for really great storytelling yeah. in terms of films. But – Getting back to uh, what you were saying, it does it does unify us because we we are we we're all human beings and we all have the same wants and the same desires and the same uh, sadness. Um, yeah, underneath all the details and all yep. the whatever, is the, the end of the day, we just want to feel loved, <laughs> understood, like we're provide important. for a family, yep. eat, have conversations with people, and be respected. Exactly. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I really think story is what is the unifying thing of mm -hmm. all things. It's like in all art forms. So, okay. And then the last question I have for you today is where would you like to see the Valley Film Festival in five years? Oh my gosh. So 25 <laughs> years. Let's just jump ahead. So That's year 25. Years. Yes. Um, I, I think. And I invite you to dream a little. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm going to because. Uh, during our coffee break, um, I think I mentioned that it would be cool to have a little village, a yes. little a little film village. Um, so yes, by year twenty twenty five, I want to make sure that um, the core group is um, 
getting a stipend, a monthly stipend at least, if not more, um, and to take over the NoHo Arts community for a solid week and turn it into like a, a village, a, commu- that, a oh, film village. That would be so cool. So that we are um, using the spaces around us, giving them business, and um, just showing off just showing off North Hollywood to the world. Yeah, totally. Now yeah. I'm, I'm there and I love it. Awesome. Well, well I you. might need you to help me with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm definitely down to do that. Definitely. Thank you, Tracy, so much for oh talking to Oh my gosh. Today. Thank you. And if anyone has any, they want to reach out to you, whatever, they can just reach out to you through the Valley Film Fest. So valleyfilmfest.com is our website. Our handle is Valley Film Fest on all social networks. Oh, that's and good. I am Tracy Adlai. T-R-A-C-E-Y-A-D-L-A-I. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much, Tracy. That was such a great interview. Thank you for the yummy coffee, for frothing my milk. I so needed that on New Year's Day. It was a great way to start 2019 with you talking about amazing things, talking about dreams and following our dreams and sticking to it. I mean, 19 years, the Valley Film Festival in Los Angeles, that's Uh, that's amazing. It's a huge accomplishment. And I just want to say bravo to you, Tracy. And thank you for letting me pick your brain. And, you know, I think this will help someone out there who's got a film or maybe film festival goers like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll give those smaller festivals a chance. Thank you. Yes, that's the point. Yay. Everybody wins. My biggest takeaway from this interview, other than the fact that Tracy's just so incredibly kind and giving of her information, is that We don't always have to know exactly what career we're going to be in, but if we just start to move towards it, we'll start to figure it out. Like she went to film school. She realized she didn't like the creative end of it. So then she got more into producing and then she got more into like, well, hey, let me put it together in a film festival because she's like the ultimate networker and it might even morph again into something else. And that's great. And I think that too many people like they'll say, oh, I want to be a chef and then they'll you know, start to go to culinary school and then they get completely discouraged. But maybe you're just supposed to open a restaurant and design um, the look and feel of it. There's a reason why there's something about it that you like. And sometimes it's hidden inside of it. And we have to go on that journey. We have to go towards it. And I've noticed like with the universe, if we take that step, if we take that leap of faith and we go in that direction, the universe sort of meets us halfway. And it comes to us and says, okay, look, I saw you. I saw you take that leap of faith. I see you moving in this direction. I'm going to reveal some stuff to you. And I think that if we just keep waiting to take that chance or make that move because we're waiting to know what to do and we want all the information, we're never, ever, ever going to get anywhere because there's never going to be all the information there. It's never going to be there. Information comes to us through movement. As we're moving towards something, things are revealed. Things are, that were always there. They just, we needed to move to see them. In order to move, you have to make moves. You have to sign up for a school or go on that trip or call that person back or, you know, make your first film, or write that first draft of your book. Like you have to get started. You have to do something. And as you do that, other stuff moves out of the way and you go, wait a minute. Oh my God. Yeah, this is actually the real thing I wanted to do. And then even after that, there's another level of reveal. And then maybe it changes. So it's not so much about revealing, but about morphing and changing and growing and evolving. So, you know, if you're headed on a path, don't get discouraged if the first couple things aren't really what you thought it would be. Keep looking. Follow that feeling. Follow the feeling. Keep following the feeling and you will get to where I think you're meant to be and where you want to be and where you where you go, yeah, this is like... I love my life. This is awesome. You're going to get there. I believe in you. I know you will. You're going to find it. But you just have to keep trying. Keep picking up rocks, turning them over, look underneath it, keep walking, keep going, keep going. That's my motto for this. For this year, it was my motto for the last few years. Keep going. Hashtag keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. If you want to connect with Tracy and the Valley Film Festival, all of the links and all the pertinent information will be on the show notes on the IHaveDreamsDammit.com website. All right. So thank you, Tracy. And everybody else, I will see you guys, not see you, but hear you or speak to you or you know what I mean next week. Okay. Bye-bye.